Hello everyone, this is Mumbo, and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft server. It's episode 110, and as you can probably hear from my voice just a little bit, I have been ill over the past couple days. I have been super, super rough. My, my throat has been all seized up, my nose has been running, my eyes have been streaming. Uh, it's been a bit of a nightmare, so I've been away from Minecraft for a little while. But I am very happy to have popped back onto the Hermitcraft server to have seen the storage wars really has taken off. So let's see what sort of bids we have going on here. So we've got 42 diamonds for the first one. Oh my word, 42 diamonds for the first one. That, that's, a, that's a lot of diamonds. Uh, we've got 64 diamonds for number two. Holy mackerel. Um, 64 diamonds for number three. We've got 128 diamonds for number four. What on earth? Oh, I can't even remember what's in there. In fact, actually, that's something that I'm going to get onto in a second because I feel like that needs changing. And then also, 33 diamonds for number five. Wow, uh, this has been a money-making scheme. <laughs> that is, there's some serious, serious money to be made here. So I'm just going to clarify some of the rules quickly, and I've added some bits into the rule book earlier on in the week, but I thought I'd mention them here because a few people were confused down in the comment section saying that once the player has bid, the other hermits can see how much they've bid, and then obviously they can bid more than them, and that's kind of the point. I want the other hermits to keep coming back and checking in on this place and outbidding each other, so you kind of get bidding wars going on. So I've added that into... The, the rule book here, so bidding wars are welcome. If you place a bid, then come back a few days later to see someone has bid more. You can then increase your bid. Highest bid at 12 p.m. BST wins the lot. Now, I've been thinking about how we did the opening of the things. I said to the hermits that they could only open them once. I might alter the rules so that you can only open them once per bid. So, for example, if you are planning on upping your bid, then you can open the storage container again. That might be the way to go, because otherwise people are going to forget what's in there, and then it sort of loses the fun a tiny bit. So, to all hermits watching this, and if you're not a hermit, please tell a hermit, you are now allowed to open a container every single time you place a bid on it. So, say for example, you want to place a bid on number three, you can open the container so that you're sort of informed and reminded of what's in there, and then you can increase your bid. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm sorry that that hasn't always been the case. As I said, I'm totally learning the ropes with this thing. This was an entirely new concept. So obviously I was trying to work out the logistics of it. Originally, I thought my original plan was a good idea, but I think that this way of doing things will just be a little bit more fun. And remember, bidding closes in three days time at 12 p.m. BST. I've just realized this instruction book barrel totally needs to be a lectern. How? How have I forgotten about the lectern? I then realized why I hadn't done it after going on a bit of an adventure to get a bookshelf, but it's here now, so this, this is a lot, a lot smarter. This is perfect. I really like the lectern. I think it's fantastic. Anyway, moving on from Storage Wars, I could use this thing all day. I mean, just hold down the right click button and the machine does its thing. It's, it's honestly one of the most satisfying redstone contraptions to use, I would say. And we need a ton of wood for the next project that I want to work on. So this is the only place that we can go. And after 10, maybe 15 minutes, this is how much we got. I wasn't even expecting it to be this much. <laughs> that is so crazy. That is what? I mean... So there's nine stacks there. I don't know, I can't even count. 15 stacks, 15 stacks. It, that took me way too long to work out. And that, coupled with the many sticks that we have from the witch farm, means that we are kind of onto a winner with this one. I mean, this... This is going to be good. So here we are over at the new Minecraft 1.14 village. And, I mean, I've been, I've been away from the Hermitcraft server for maybe a week. Okay? Because I've been ill. So I've kind of been out the running a little bit. And <laughs> lots, has, lots has happened. <laughs> all right, let's try and take all of this in. So what level are we at now? So this is Y equals 245. So we have dragons. We have got moon bases. We have got flying things. We have got... My rocket's crashed into the side. <laughs> my rocket's gone through Green's base. That's hilarious. We've got monsters, rain clouds. We've got... And lightning going on. We have a lot of stuff happening here. 
we we have a we have a lot of stuff happening here, and my my puny little base has kind of fallen by the wayside a tiny bit. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's time for me to put up a white flag and surrender. But this isn't going to be any white flag, as you can probably tell from the number of fences and the number of wood blocks that I've got. This is going to be quite a tall white flag. I'm going to surrender. As a winner so gradually I'm going to work my way upwards building kind of like a really rickety looking post that starts off quite big down at the bottom and then gradually just winds its way up it's going to use some of the other builds as supports as well and it's kind of going to just meander its way up and then, and then we're gonna put the flag at the top <laughs> just to be annoying just to be a really annoying neighbor now I thought the building of this would look good in the form of a super fast time lapse and I thought while we did the super fast time lapse I would tell you about a project that I've been working on outside of the Minecraft YouTube channel so for those of you who don't know one of my big passions is filming things doing mini documentaries I also absolutely love classic cars and over the past couple of months we've been filming a little project that is called the Rat Pack with two classic Alfa Romeos that have been, let's just say, aged gracefully. Um, they're a little bit ratty, but they look so, so cool. And we've filmed a project with those cars and the owners and everything like that. And finally, it has been finished. Actually, me getting ill kind of helped out because it meant I couldn't record videos, which meant that I could dedicate multiple days to actually getting this edit all finished. And I'm really, really proud of it. And hopefully it's going to release on Saturday at 4 p.m. So if you are interested in that sort of thing, then please do check it out. I'll probably mention it again at some point in the near future. But if you're not already, make sure that you subscribe to my filming channel. I'll put a link to that down in the description. I would say that has been fairly successful. It looks very rickety. It looks like a very, very rickety little post. It's difficult to get a full view of it, but you can see it kind of winds its way up. It's using some of these things as supports. I don't know. That one, I feel like, I, th I think I need to get rid of some of the curves on them. Because, yeah, they don't look quite so natural. Maybe I'll even put some struts in. But one thing that we definitely need to do is the flag coming out the top. So I'm actually going to run back over to Exumavoid's little shop type thing. And uh, we'll pick up a bunch of white wool. So I would say we're going to need maybe three stacks of white wool. And in the book, I have listed my reasoning as to make a massive surrender flag in the 1.14 village. I would say... That's about right. I love this idea of a shop. So I just, I built up half of the flag and then realized that it looks a bit rubbish if I don't put any wind waves in it. So I think I'm going to take it down and put some wobbles in, but I've, I've never really built a flag before. So this is what we've got. I, I've added in the wind waves and things, and I, I mean, I wasn't certain whether or not the wind waves would have wobbles in them or whether they'd be totally uniform. It's difficult. I, I tried my best to do both and this was the one that looked far better and this is our gigantic surrender flag So although we have surrendered the competition Okay, we are now out of the building to the build limit contest and building the biggest house uh, We do technically have the tallest build at this point in time, which means as I say we have retired as winners and that is the most important thing this whole building the biggest house thing though It, it did get out of hand quite fast didn't it? I mean look at that as like a, it's it's a shame that I can't get this in there as well, unless obviously I stood somewhere like here. I mean, it's <laughs> they're just, it's so hilarious how out of hand things got with this. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is totally, totally ridiculous, isn't it? Anyway, back over at the base now. I have got a redstone project that I really want to work on. Now, this is something that I've been talking about for a little while. In fact, what do we actually have in there? Not many pistons. Okay, oh, I've left all my wood and everything over at the 1.14 village. I suppose we're, we're heading over to the industrial district so I could farm some more. It only takes like 10 minutes. It's probably faster for me to gather up that wood than it was to actually walk to the 1.14 area and back. So I think that's the way that I'm going to do it. Hmm, there's not as much space here as I was expecting. So, so what my plan is, is I want to make an automatic concrete breaker, okay? We use loads and loads of concrete on the Hermitcraft server. I am getting bored of holding down the right click and the left click button underneath the tree near my bed to gather up all my concrete. I want to automate this process and using TNT in Minecraft 1.14 is the best way to do it. And I've just realized that we've got a lot of space back here. We could definitely fit. Yeah, we could fit the contraption here. So this is where the concrete could go. We could feed it in from that side. It would all be shot downwards. 
The TNT will explode, it will blow it up, it will end up in those hoppers there, and it will end up in the wood chest. So we don't necessarily have to do all of this stuff once again, because as we learnt from building up the cobblestone farm over there, <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of room for error when you're building those things. There's plenty that can go wrong very, very fast. So now that I've worked out a lot of the logistics, I've been doing some research into what designs I should be using and things, it should actually be fairly plain sailing he says with his fingers very crossed what on earth what on earth this is why i hate having shulker boxes in random chests we don't even need a concrete maker anymore we have <laughs> we have loads of what on earth that's like a base box i hate myself for losing that i hate myself anyway build wise this thing is really really easy like really really easy um all it is is a bunch of zero tick pulse generators that are going to push the concrete down so that it's in line with where this TNT falls. I mean, this is about 90% of the redstone right here. I know, there are no excuses for you guys not building these in your own Minecraft world, okay? So if I place in a block here... Okay, yeah, that's, that's definitely a zero tick. You can tell it's a zero tick because you barely even see the piston extend and retract. That's exactly what we want from this thing. And now we have another zero tick over here, which pushes everything along. Now, it, the server seems to be struggling a tiny bit because normally it's a little bit faster than this, but if I hold down the right click button, you can see that's how fast we're going to be converting concrete powder into concrete. So it's pretty quick, not quite as fast as it is in single player. In single player, it's like brrrr, but on the server, yeah, it's not too bad. And also, Iskal's currently online, and he's probably doing some silly ice farming or something and crashing the server. So, all we have to do now is we need to hook up our little TNT system into a lever over by this thing so that we can actually switch it all on. And that is as simple as running a redstone line into that redstone torch right there, or at least the block underneath it. Now, if all has gone to plan here, when we flick this lever... I, you know, I'm not I'm not actually that good at redstone, clearly. Give me a couple seconds to just move this repeater. I'm going to blame that on the fact that, yeah, I'm just coming off an illness. So we need to power the block that's underneath this powered redstone torch, or this redstone torch that's on, because obviously, yeah, powering a block that's already powered kind of doesn't do anything. Right, let's flick this lever over here now, and we should see... Okay. I didn't see the TNT drop then, and I was 100% expecting this thing to explode. But there we go. Okay, so the TNT's dropping. Nothing that's not meant to explode is exploding, which is good. We don't seem to be losing any of the glass or any of the blocks or anything like that. I would say, yeah, I'd say we're doing well here. Now, I was, I was going to use this thing and I was gonna show off how fantastic it is, but I can't help but notice I have two stacks of gravel and zero sand. Not exactly the best situation. So I think what I'm going to do is take a couple of shulker boxes, try and find a gravel biome, and obviously gather up some extra sand too. Now this is just a really, really, really fast time lapse of me mining out a bunch of sand. I always think it's satisfying watching these in third person perspectives. And to be honest with you, it didn't really take as long as I was expecting it to. I thought I'd do a full length time lapse, but then, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I just didn't think it was worth doing for the full length of the time, so here we are. Now, one thing that I haven't managed to get yet is all of the gravel, because I have no idea where we can get lots of gravel from anymore. I have definitely mined out an entire gravel biome, and that's the nearest one. I then just need to find another gravel biome, but I don't even know what they're called or where they are. Or what they look like. Is there gravel still at the bottom of the ocean? I mean, I suppose we could go that route, but it's slow. We definitely need a gravel biome. I need to find one. It turns out that actually lots of people have been asking about gravel biomes to the point where in the Hermitcraft Discord, we actually have a pinned message with all of the gravel biomes listed. That is going to come in handy. Now, the nearest gravel patch that hasn't been totally destroyed is actually quite a long way away. So I've brought along with me 
a few shovels and also a bunch of shulker boxes and I think I'm going to try my best to just stack up for a decent length of time into the future. I thought this would work really well in the form of a third person time lapse because as previously mentioned I think time lapses of people clearing out large spaces is one of the most satisfying things that you can watch in the world and I thought during this third person time lapse I would actually ask a question that I've asked in the past on my YouTube channel but it's been a little while. I think I, I, think I did this in Hermitcraft Season 4. I asked people how many of you actually still play minecraft or i asked how do do you still play minecraft and then i got the percentages back and i think in hermitcraft season four which was about two three years ago now the percentage was 60 percent of people didn't play minecraft anymore and 40 percent of the people did so it was actually a majority of the people watching my minecraft videos didn't play minecraft anymore which i always found very interesting and slightly flattering because if you don't play Minecraft but you enjoy watching my Minecraft videos then that means that you must be enjoying watching me which is definitely nice to know but because Minecraft is on such a massive upswing at this point in time and loads of people seem to be getting back into it I thought it'd be worth asking again how many of you still play Minecraft do you still play Minecraft if I remember there will be a poll on the screen right now that you can click and then I'll be able to take the percentages of that I can't wait to see the results so after about an hour and 10 maybe an hour Hour and 20 minutes of doing this we have managed to get ourselves this many shulker boxes filled to the brim with gravel and it has been successful but also made me feel really sick <laughs> I think maybe the combination of my my bunged up nose my sore throat and the fact that I haven't played Minecraft for a few days I've literally spent the past hour and 20 minutes just doing this like that and my head is now <laughs> feels like it, it it weighs 10 tons i don't know what to say i've never experienced this before it also feels like my frame rates are kind of struggling a little bit maybe that yeah it's kind of like 20 frames a second 30 frames a second it's jittery enough that it's just giving me the worst motion sickness and I've never experienced that before while playing Minecraft but it has come in in full force. Thankfully though the flight home should hopefully be absolutely fine motion wise because the chunks chunks aren't loading in so so yeah I'm just going to be flying I guess through the void to a certain extent and hoping that I end up somewhere near my base. Somehow I managed it. I don't I don't quite know how I managed it. I just suddenly spotted Exuma's base and then just did a hard left and I've ended up here. So now we have all of this back in the base and I am going to take this and also some of the sand that I gathered and then we can try our new exploding system for the first time. Which of course I am absolutely terrified for. So just to start things off. I'm going to try eight stacks of white concrete powder. Now I wonder how long it's going to take me to do this. I'm almost tempted to time it. That might be worth doing. Now I do feel like it's worth pointing out at this point in time that the server is seriously struggling at this point in time. I think we're definitely overdue a restart, but if I flick this lever here... I always get scared of the first lot of TNT, but that now seems to be dropping properly and ah! Oh, I've just realised. Whereabouts is this going to end up? I feel like this could actually end up falling off the edge. I might need to extend this platform out a little bit. Five minutes later, we are ready to go once again. And now the server is running even slower because Exuma is logged in. And I think he's working on some kind of big redstone contraption. But regardless... I mean... Things do seem to be being pushed. It's kind of difficult to tell what's going on, and occasionally that happens where it locks up. But for the most part, I would say we're good. Especially now that I've added in this little circuit right here that allows me to stand on the pressure plate if this piston does anything weird. And then it will update the piston, causing it to push out its block, and then I can go back to placing it. But to be honest with you, sometimes you get little rhythms where it doesn't do it, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you kind of you run into issues. Either way, this is so much faster than it used to be. <laughs> that, like, just doing all of the, the tree plate, well, the water placing, holding down right click and left click, 
that is nowhere near as fast as what I'm doing right here. So there we have it ladies and gents, I think that rounds everything up for today's Hermitcraft episode. It's been a really good fun one, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, and if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching guys, this has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later. Oh, and filming channel stuff, you know what to do, link will be on the end screen.